Hi, this is Matt from Tracy and Matt .uk. I'm from Boxings.com. Here we are looking at the Acer B Touch E220. And to quick unboxing video for you before our review. So on top we have the handset, which we're going to return to in just a moment. Then inside we have battery, which is 1300 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty good uh, considering the uh, size and everything else. So 1300 milliamp hour battery is pretty decent. And have a wired headset, which has uh, foam ear covers with it as well. And the headset has a four pole, three and a half mil jack on the one end, followed by an inline microphone with push button, quite plasticky though, and quite chunky. And then the headphones themselves, which are the in ear style headphones. Nothing terribly swish about those, um, get the job done, but I'm sure most people will use their own headphones. Also in the box we have a standard USB to micro USB sync charge cable. We have a UK 3 pin plug which accompanies the charger here which is a USB style charger. So a USB socket on the top and obviously plugs into four on the other end. We then have a micro SD adapter with uh, also included with a 2 gig micro SD card so we can use a standard SD in a standard SD slot and all the manuals underneath so let's take a look we have a small specification guide out of the way they then have the quick guide which is quite chunky but uh, it is covered in a number of different languages we then have the international warranty and the safety information, again, which is quite chunky, but it's printed in a number of different languages. So look at the handset itself. This is actually one of only a few um, handsets that uh, running Android that has this forward, forward facing style fixed quality keyboard, uh, the um, Char HTC Charger and also um, the ZTE Tourists being the other the other couple that spring to mind. There aren't too many that have this form factor. Obviously this is Ace's version. Top we have the loudspeaker. Either side probably uh, here I think we can just make out some proximity sensor and ambient light sensor. 2.6 inch display is actually 320 by 240 pixels. That's a quarter VGA. Below the display we have the phone keys, so red and green phone keys for answer and hang up or send an end of calls. Home, back, search, uh, um, menu and search button. Then a D-pad in the center. Uh, looks like it's an optical D-pad. We'll confirm that when we turn on. It also has a push button in there as well. Large QWERTY keyboard, much larger than that that you find, uh, say, on um, a BlackBerry. And the keys are physically quite large. And as you can see there, they are fairly raised in their arrangement, so it's pretty good. Left hand side, we have a three and a half mil headphone connector for using the wired headset that's supplied or indeed your own headphones. On the bottom, really nothing to see on the back here, which uh, is probably what, uh, not easy to determine. I think that's actually the hole for the lanyard. And yes, on the front, just at the bottom here, we do have the hole for the microphone. Up on the right hand side, up and down volume control, and then the micro USB connector for sync and charge. Nothing on top of the device. On the back, we do have a 3 megapixel autofocus camera, and next to that we do have a grill which is for the loudspeaker. You'll notice there's no flash, uh, no mirror for self-portraits or anything like that. It's a fairly, um, fairly simple um, camera there. Back cover pops off, like so. Plastic back cover. And underneath we have obviously the cavity for the battery. Then a, actually we do have a micro SD card already installed, which is fairly unusual. So I think they've just doubled up really with the micro SD cards in our um, review sample. A SIM card already in place, but that's where that goes obviously. And then the battery pops in place like so. That cover then just snaps back on to be, uh, there we go, neatly in place. Back is quite nice, it's fairly curved and the design is quite, uh, quite different with uh, the, the trim around the outside and then the silver back and curved back cover is quite attractive and then the black face uh, around the screen and uh, silver grey keys as well 
so that's kind of nice. Uh, we will just power up, and while we wait for that to come on, just run down the spec. Quad band for GSM, dual band for HSDPA, it will work most places when you take it on holiday roaming. 116 millimeters top to bottom, 63 millimeters wide, and just 12 millimeters thick. It actually seems to be thinner than the 12 millimeters would suggest. I think we've become used to uh, devices that are around the 9 and 10 millimeter mark. Uh, so this 12 one, taken at the widest point, 12 millimeters, seems quite thin though, and quite lightweight, 109 grams. Certainly no, uh, not a heavy handset by any means. Uh, TFT screen is resistive touchscreen rather than capacitive, which is uh, perhaps a bit of a shame, uh, but nevertheless it is resistive. Uh, 256 meg of RAM and 512 meg of ROM. Micro SD card does support up to 32 gig micro SD HD memory cards. Wi-Fi is 802.11bge, um, no end standard though on this one, just BNG. Uh, Bluetooth 2 with A2DP support and uh, micro USB supports USB 2.0. I say 3 megapixel autofocus camera. We've got Android 2.2 Froyo on this, and uh, I think that pretty much covers the basics. Also have GPS, of course, which is uh, pretty much a requirement from any handset these days, and the uh, geotagging supported with the camera. So that covers the basics. So first of all, we need to swipe to unlock. Again, we have to use something hard like a fingernail because it's a resistive touchscreen. And uh, because we have a, SD, uh, a SIM card installed, we actually do have some connectivity, which is pretty cool. Pull down at the top, it's a notification from Vodafone, because we have a Vodafone SIM card installed. And uh, we swipe that back up, uh, notification area. Uh, here we have the Google search with voice search, and uh, the Android tips there. Ace settings, contacts, messages, access to Android market. Swipe across the next page, we have the time and something that's unable to connect at the moment because we haven't gone onto a Wi-Fi network and a blank page coming back the other way we have uh, Twidroid and Facebook and then uh, thanks to the camera and media in the corner there the other buttons down the side are for the phone so we've got the phone dialer which uh, hasn't got an on-screen keypad just uses the keypad here within the QWERTY embedded into the QWERTY and we've got your call log, your contacts your favourites again because I haven't actually set anything up as yet doesn't reveal a great deal coming back out of here yeah, just locked so coming back out of here going back home uh, we do have then the um, all the applications so uh, Acer, Acer Sync and Registration the browser, a barcode scanner camcorder and camera features uh, what else do we have? Email on Facebook, FM radio, that's not mentioned in the spec, but clearly must be there. There's things like Gmail and media server. RoadSync is uh, an email client, Droid we've already mentioned. Spinlet and Yahoo's and YouTube. So again, mostly standard stuff in there, a few things that are a little bit more unusual. And then finally at the top we have the browser. We'll come back to that in a second when we go into settings. Wireless networks, go to Wi Fi, turning on Wi Fi, and we'll connect to our Wi Fi network. So, again, we don't have an on screen keyboard, which may seem fairly obvious having the fact that we have the fixed QWERTY, but you don't have the option of an on screen keypad. So, let's go ahead and type in the passphrase. There we go, and we're connecting, a obtaining an IP address. There we go, and we are connected, so coming back out of here, we can then go into the browser, and rather than going to Google, we'll head over to our site, so... There we go. Keys are pretty large, as I've already mentioned. Um, we'll take a little bit of getting used to, because they're slightly domed and rounded. Um, so... Uh, just takes a little bit of time to get used to, but no big deal. There we go, and we're all on board. So that's our site here, loaded reasonably quickly, no big problem. Only thing is, with just a quarter VGA display, 
um, it's uh, a little bit limited, any site will be somewhat limited, you won't be able to read the text until you go fairly close, don't think we've got, certainly haven't got multi-touch because being resistive so we can't zoom in this method, so we can zoom by zooming in this way, and we have to go in fairly close even on you know, our site here to actually be able to read the text, double tap will zoom in and out, as you can see there, uh, but it's all fairly straightforward, don't know if we have don't seem to have, no, we don't have a landscape option or portrait option so it doesn't, uh, whether or not we have an accelerometer, don't know but uh, isn't actually supported in the browser anyway going back home, the other thing we'll take a quick look at is in here, let's take a quick look at YouTube so we'll look at the YouTube client, except terms of service, off we go and we'll do a quick search for my YouTube channel, which is Leo D. Take a quick look at one of the unboxing videos that we have here, which will be the first one. So, buffering. It's time for a better. Well, it's obviously decided to start off with an advert, but uh, it didn't take too long to buffer and actually start playing, so that's pretty cool. So that really is a very quick look at the Acer B-Touch E220. We'll have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash tracyandmatt or facebook.com slash tracyandmatt.co.uk and uh, feel free to ask any questions, post any comments, all that kind of stuff. And if you want to ask us about this or indeed any other handsets that we're reviewing at the moment, please do so. But I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmatt.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching.